Hi guys, Joe from Total Just Gaming here, and I'm back with another deck profile for you today. Today we're looking at an upgraded version of Battle Poets, or as I'm just going to refer to it, the G Gundam deck. Uh, this is one of the only two Brave Machine decks. I'm not really huge on building Brave Machines, however, I do extensively play and build and test uh, both the Battle Poets and the Ride Changers, or as I call it, Autobots. Uh, so we are going to be diving into those two today. Uh, first off, I want to thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave comments. I love talking to you guys. And we are working hard to bring you guys buddy fight content five days a week, if we can. So we are just going to roll right into our deck profile. Our buddy is going to be Battle Poet Reporting. Uh, size 0 with uh, Pay of Life, so our buddy gift just pretty much negates his call cost. Uh, when this card enters the field, you may pay a gauge if you do. Put a card from your drop zone into the soul of another card with Battle Poet in its name uh, on your field. And when this card is discarded uh, due to an effect... Draw a card. Uh, let me look at that. That's worded really weirdly. When this card is discarded from your hand, due to effect with the card with Battle Poet in its name, draw a card. There we go. So, we'll move right into it. So, as we said, our buddy is reporting. Oh, the light's really bright today. Um, so, I already read off the effect. We're just going to go right around, and there we go. So, he's a 3 one 2 out of 0, which is fine. He's our buddy. We're going to run four of them. I've already read his effect. He triggers a lot of skills, is able to set up... Uh, Talking with Lyric Over in the discard, if Lyric Over is in the discard pile, pretty easily. Uh, and also, we have a lot of pitch effects, and we want to be able to pitch him all the time, if possible, because he lets us draw a card just for pitching him. Now, the backbone of the deck. Uh, we are going to be running four of him. That is the G Gundam himself. Uh, this is Battle Poet Talking. He is a 626 at a size 3. Call cost is Pay a Gauge. Uh, ability is Roar Language Finger. Very nice allusion, uh, alluding to Shining Finger. Uh, you may discard a card with Battle Poet in its name, uh, when in its name from your hand. If you do for this turn, this card gets 5,000 power with a crit of 2. You may only do this once per turn. He's got Penetrate and the ability to Ride. Uh, the ability to ride for 2 gauge. So he is pretty much what we're going to be focusing on in order to be able to ride on him. Uh, needless to say, he becomes an 11k with a crit of 4 that has penetrate. Uh, that's absolutely brutal in this meta right now. We are always looking for uh, high crits, high power, because we have um, a lot of higher life decks now, and on top of that, we have a lot of wall decks, center wall decks now. And 11 can smash through pretty much anything, and the penetrate with the crit of 4 means you're going to drain them pretty quickly. So, we're of course going to be running 4 of him. Following up, we got 4 copies of Battle Poet Thinking. Let's see if this doesn't help. Huh, a little bit. Okay, so, now we got my shadow over it. <laughs> so, uh, this is Battle Poet Thinking. Uh, this is a 624 size 3. Uh, his call cost is pay 2 gauge and put the top card of your deck into this card's soul. This has Sing Mike ability is Sing Mike Blade. Pretty sure that's just an alluding to any uh, Gundam with a beam saber. You may discard a card from your hand with Battle Poet in its name. Uh, from your hand, if you do for this turn, a card with Battle Poet in its name uh, on your field gets double deck. You may use this ability only once per turn. He has Move and Soul Guard. So, again, he... I'm going to just turn this light back on. Make it a little bit easier. So... He is our second piece. Uh, we do run him at a four because we want to get him on the field uh, pretty quickly. He helps us set up for a double attack with battle with uh, talking by making him 
uh, double attack. He's already got the penetrate. We're obviously going to be pitching two cards just for the effects this time around. Um, really not too much to say on that outside of he just uh, sets up and makes talking even more dangerous. So uh, we're, of course, going to be running four of him. Following that up, we are going to be running three copies of the newest card to come out for Battle Poet, and that is Battle Poet Shouting. Uh, Battle, po Battle Poet Sh Shouting is a 636, size 3. Uh, call cost is pay gauge. Uh, or if you are right on a card with Battle Poet in its name, this reduce the size of this card by 3, so he becomes a size 0 with insane stats. Uh, if you're your opponent's effects, uh, he has a second ability. The Souls and Art called to Battle Poet, in their name, uh, on your field cannot be... Souls and Art cards with Battle Poet in their names cannot uh, be put into the field by the opponent's effects. And his uh, third effect is, if this card, uh, when this card is discarded from your hand by a uh, effect of Battle Poet, put gauge one and gain a life. So, he's a very versatile card, which is why we're running three of him. Uh, I may drop um, Speaking down to a two of and bump him up to a three of. Uh, that way we can get two size zero monsters with insane stats. Uh, plus his pitch effect is gauge and, uh, gauge and gain a life, which is very, very good. Uh, we definitely need gauge in this deck. So, um... I do like him. I'm currently running him at a three of. Uh, he is really, really good. Uh, we got Dark Hero. He's also can go in Dark Hero, but I really don't see how he doesn't mesh with them at all. He is strictly uh, intended to be a um, in this Battle Poet deck. So I don't understand why they uh, dual affiliated him with Dark Hero. But other than that, I think he's a fantastic card. He happily goes in this deck. He helps us get engaged in life. Uh, gives us another attacker if we need to field two monsters, which is amazing. Oh no, he's probably one of the best battle poets out there at the moment, aside from talking and uh, thinking. So, you know, third place in a deck of five battle poets. Eh, mid tier, mid ground. Following him up, we're running three copies of Battle Poet Speaking. He's our final Battle Poet we're going to be looking at. He's a 6-2-5 size 3. Call cost is gauge 2. Uh, his ability is Shout High Megaphone Cannon. Uh, he more closely actually resembles Heavy Arms in terms of just sheer munitions dump uh, as displayed on his card. So his ability is, you may discard a, a card with Battle Opponent in its name from your hand. If you do, destroy a monster or item on your opponent's field. You only use his ability once per turn. You can also ride him for two gauge. So we can ride Talking and we can ride uh, Speaking. He's very good. He's a good utility card. Uh, he has good stats at a 625. Uh, not quite as good as some of the other guys. I think he is right. Yeah, he's a little bit better than thinking, but uh, when you're talking about shouting and talking, uh, they are top dog in terms of stats. Still, he hits numbers. He has a good crit. Uh, he is a good utility card that lets us either take out a monster, as it is non-size restricted destruction, which I'm always happy for, and on top of that, he can also take out items, which is very necessary in this meta. We have Thunder Empire running around. We can get rid of the cleats for Thora. Uh, if you're running into toilets, you can prematurely blow up their toilet. Um, you can take out any weapon that's being run in uh, Tyrants or any Danger World deck in particular at the moment. I'm aware of that new item coming. And just uh, any sort of item he can blow up. Uh, he's good in counter matches against any Hero World deck because a large amount of the Hero World characters, uh, when they transform or ride, they can still be touched. So you can blow them up, uh, blow up their item just as easily. So he's a good utility card, so I'm running him out of three of. Following that, we got more util another utility monster we're going to take a look at, and that is Bird Deity Cybird. 
Um, he's a 311 size zero. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, activate put uh, activate ability of put this card in from your hand or the field into the soul of a card you do your right on. Um, if you do, uh, if you have six life or less and this card's in the soul of a card you write on, you can pay a gauge. And for this turn, he gets double attack. So he's in there to give me additional two chances if we don't get uh, thinking on the field to make uh, talking get double attack. He doesn't particularly give Solgar, which kind of sucks, but he does give Talking double attack, and Talking needs his uh, double shining finger, as it were. So uh, he helps make sure that happens. So we're running just two of them because we're already running an onboard double attack guy, uh, like thinking. So moving right along into impacts, we're going to be running four copies of Shout Out Battle Poets Lyric Over. Running four copies of that. Gonna have to snag a card to read it. So it's cost is paid two. You can countercast this and put this uh, into a soul of a card with battle poet on your field. Uh, if if this card is in the soul of a of a card with battle poet in its name on your field, it cannot be destroyed by effects from your opponent. All cards with battle poet in their name get plus two, plus two, and a crit of three. So this raises all of our monsters just to uh, really good levels of uh, attacking and crit. Now that we actually also have uh, shouting, that's a eight eight size zero with a crit of four. Uh, everybody else gets pretty decent. Everybody hits around 9k e pretty easily. Or 8k, excuse me, pretty easily, as everybody's already at 6. Uh, it means that reporting can hit numbers at a 5. Uh, we're, of course, we're going to be putting this into the soul of shout out of shouting, uh, making go gold mode, more alluding to G Gundam. My apologies. So then, plus he'll raise his credit up to five, to what are we looking at here already? Four. So with lyric over and his ability, he's a crit of five. We give him double attack. That's pretty much swing for game, especially with penetrate. So they absolutely have to waste a shield just to stop you because you're going to take either a quarter of their life, depending if you're running against a dragon's Y deck, or all their or. Er, half their life in one swing, so they got to be able to shield you twice. Uh, that's pretty nasty. On top of that, it protects itself from destruction effects, so they pretty much can't touch you. Uh, combining that with shouting, they absolutely can't snipe this out of the soul either. So we're running four of this. Moving into spells, we're running four copies of Resupply, Complete, Battle Poets Launch. It's another card that's specifically for Battle Poets. We're running four of it, but I gotta read it because it's a wordy spell. You wanna play this card if you have a Battle Poet in it, if you have a card with Battle Poet in its name on your field. Put the top card of your deck into your gauge, put up to one monster with or impact with Battle Poet in its name for your drop zone into your hand, you may only cast resupply once per turn. So it gives us gauge. Um Gives us gauge. Um, it also lets us put a battle poet or uh, lyric over back from the discard pile to your hand. So uh, we can do quite a bit of things with it. It lets us help cast it, uh, lyric over. It helps us give us whatever piece we need that's in the discard pile. Should have been destroyed or paid for with gauge. We're, of course, going to be running four copies of this. Uh, moving down the line, we're running four copies of Body of Steel. Um, we need to be able to shore up defenses, control the board. This lets us stonewall a large majority of attacks, save for some of the higher characters like the Chaos deck. <laughs> so this lets us stonewall attacks and counterattack on them. Uh, we'll be able to get over anybody pretty easily as everybody's sitting already at a uh, attack of six which uh, hits above our number line. Our number line is always going to be uh, based at a 5k uh, to hit defenses since everybody's sitting at 6. Uh, save for cy reporting and cyborg, cybered, uh, but cybered's not going to be sticking around on the field much longer. So we're running for this because we got to maintain board presence, and this lets us counterattack on them. 
Moving right along, uh, I've seen through the moves. This is the Brave Machine variant. Again, basic open center shield. So we're running for that. We are running three copies of Powered Body. I've already talked about this extensively in all the other decks. I'm running it. Um, I'm running this because it can be cast uh, for free if we're at six life or less. Uh, that's a little harder to manage this time around as we do have some life gain and Brave Machines actually do have quite a bit of defense to them. However, uh, we could be getting to six life pretty easily because we also need to be at six life to activate Cybered. So it's a castless card, but should we need to pay its gauge, uh, casting costs, it's a gauge and a life, and we're doing this because this is, next time we take damage, it is reduced to zero, so this lets us uh, reduce damage of anything, impacts, big attacks, uh, any sort of swing on our life gets uh, shot down to zero. Uh, with a potentially free uh, card that lets us do this, of course, I'm going to be running the set at three of. Moving into it, we're also running three copies of Long Range Cannon. Uh, Long Range Cannon is you may only cast this if you are right on a card. Its cast cost is pay a gauge. For this turn, the card you ride on can attack your opponent even if there's a monster in the center. This is just icing on the cake for talking once you power him up. It gives him Shadow Dive. Uh, that's extremely important if you can give him Shadow Dive uh, and at least get either... Um, Lyric over to make him a 3 crit, or power him up to make him a 4 crit with Shadow Dive. Uh, it's just amazing and easily in the game. Now, we need Gage. Uh, we don't need a whole bunch of Gage in this deck, because uh, we're not swapping out forms uh, willy-nilly. Um, we're trying to get on talking and stay on talking. Um, however, all of our cards do cost at least a gauge or two, so we, while not, we're not overly relying on gauge, I do like to have some backup options to get more gauge, as we do now in the deck on top of it. So we're going to be running two copies of Hyper Energy. We may be able, we may even bounce this up to a three of, but I've always had a really steady supply of gauge at running this at a two of, so I don't need to run it. So I don't feel I need it too much, but, you know, one more may not hurt. But right now we're running it at a 2 of. We're also running two copies of the Ace Arrives. We can only play this if we have 7 or less life. Uh, put a monster from your drop zone into the soul, or... Uh, from, or... Bleh on your field or card into your hand. So this lets us go grab like Cybird if uh, he was in the gauge, put him into talking. This lets us go get any of the battle poets or lets us get reporting or shouting uh, back from the discard pile if we've pitched them for their effects back to our hand. Uh, Seven OS Life is very easy to pull off. So we're running the side of two of. We're also running two copies of Prepped and OK to Launch. Uh, this is the set spell that says when you ride, uh, draw two cards and put this into the discard pile. Uh, you cannot uh, set more than one prepped and okay ready to launch. So, so once you do it, you can't set another one for a turn. Uh, we're only running two of this, and the reason for that is because we are tr only really riding one striving to ride one card, and that's talking. So having multiples of this card just show up and be dead weight in the hand when we need to be pitching stuff that literally says Battle Poet uh, didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. I do uh, see why running at least two is necessary because uh, we do want to at least get to draw two when we ride uh, talking or we have to ride uh, speaking. So, you know, we get two cards when we ride, but... Um, we aren't writing a whole lot. We're trying to get on talking and sit there, so this is not an absolutely necessary beyond a two of. Then the final two cards of the deck are Superhero Headquarters, Brave Fort. Uh, this is set spell. Uh, whenever your Brave Machine enters the field or you ride, we gauge one. Uh, this only activates once per turn, so this lets us uh, make uh, reduce a lot of the gauge cost uh, by one, making either cards free or cards only cost one gauge. I may even consider bumping this up to a three of just because it helps mitigate gauge cost by replacing itself. 
Uh, also, if your life becomes zero, you can destroy this, destroy this card and the card you ride on, and my life becomes one instead. Uh, so this saves me from death just for at least a turn. Uh, there are very few uh, ways to, you know, make sure this doesn't happen, but this uh, lets us, I'm more using this uh, for the gauge uh, mitigation ability than I am the uh, resurrection ability. I do see this only as a two of because uh, once we get it out, we don't need it out anymore. Um, although spell sniping is becoming more prevalent, so I may actually have to bump this up to a three of. So we'll just look and see what else we can take out of the deck to make sure we can uh, make it happen a little bit easier. But guys, that's it for my G Gundam deck. I hope you like it. Uh, it's a pretty fun deck. It's uh, pretty damaging. Uh, it gets through the defenses that we see in our meta pretty easily because we have such heavy, heavy attackers. And it's a whole lot of fun. So, thanks so much for watching again, guys. Please like this video, subscribe to the channel, leave some comments. You know I love feedback. I'm happy to talk with anybody in the community. So, guys, take it easy, and I'll see you next time.